Welcome along to FIM CV Repsol. The European Talent Cup kicks us off in a matter of moments. I'm sure you're looking forward to getting underway. Yeah, hi Jack. Hi everyone. It's great to be here. 240 days have been and gone since we were last racing in the FIM CV Repsol. And the world has changed, families and lives have changed, perspectives have changed, and motorsport has certainly had to know its place in the recent global pandemic. But we're all delighted to see that the FIM CV Repsol is back today. We're delighted that circumstances have allowed us to race today. It's obviously a very, very different kind of race weekend that we used to. First of all, the fact that we're racing on a weekday rather than on a <laughs> Sunday. Um, but no, it's fantastic to be back. It's a great place to start the season, as you mentioned, very, very different circumstances to last year when the temperatures were barely scraping double figures uh, back in April 2019. We're in the heart of summer now in Estoril, and as we were walking the circuit yesterday, it certainly felt like it. Um, but these are perfect conditions for racing and uh, five great races to hopefully put smiles back on the faces of motorcycle racing fans. Yeah, hopefully that will be the case. There is your pole man, David Alonso, on pole position for the first time in his European talent cup career and here is how he did it two qualifying sessions yesterday one of them held in the morning and a second one in the afternoon in blistering heat whereby nobody was able to improve because of the heat so it was the times from our earlier qualifying session that set the grid and it was utter dominance from this man the number 80 the colombian david alonso starts from pole position for the first time in his european talent cup career in fact starts from the front row for, for the first time race, in his european talent cup I career i will try to to um, to be weak and with a good pace and we go, we we are going to try to win, but uh, it, uh, it is it is not uh, easy. So we will see. Certainly going to be a tough man to beat, Lewis. He's got form in the European Talent Cup as well. Finished fifth in the series last year with four podium finishes, including a third place here as well. And just to make matters worse for everybody else, he says that Estoril is his favourite circuit. Not that we'd be able to guess that anyway by the fact that he's half a second clear of everybody else. Yeah, absolutely. He's looked very, very good all weekend. With the exception of one session on Sunday in free practice, he's been quickest right throughout the weekend here. Um, and despite a crash in Q2, he's looked the man to beat. Um, he crashed at turn seven yesterday afternoon, by which point he'd already secured pole position and no one's really been able to get in touch with him. But as we always say, the race is a very different matter altogether. He's got to get the start right. He's got to ace it from there. He's got to try and gap the field, as difficult as that is to, is to do on these machines. And the rare riders queuing up behind him will be looking to try and keep him very much in sight. But yeah, as you say, Alonso has been the rider to beat here. Took his first ETC podium here a year ago and he'll be hoping to add his first win to his Estoril CV. You will have seen to his left hand side there David Alonso that he had Nico Tirol, a former 125cc world champion who acts as team manager and rider coach for the Aspar Junior squad. They've got a handful of riders across the European Talent Cup and the Junior World Championship as well and Tirol plays a, a huge part in developing those young riders and making sure they're ready for the step into the World Championship. Here is our first debut to talk of Angel Piqueras, a prodigal talent. He's already the 2018 pre Moto 4 champion in Spain. He's also the Spanish Moto 4 champion from last year as well. He's won two championships in two years and he's got his move up into the European Talent Cup with one of the best teams as well in the talent team, Estrella Galicia. So he is one to keep an eye on the 13 year old. Yeah, he is. He's looked very, very good as well. And uh, it's very, very difficult to try and pinpoint one talent within Spanish motorcycle racing who to look out for because there are so many of them they've got almost an embarrassment of riches of exciting talent but Piqueras everything he races in he tends to win in and he'll be looking to continue that uh, this afternoon we've got a quick shot of Zonta van der Goeberg as well who starts on the outside of the front row comes with some good racing genes son of the former 500cc Moto Grand Prix racer Jürgen van der Goeberg very calm mature young man and uh, I think he's another rider who's going to be trying to keep Alonso very much in sight uh, this afternoon yeah he's best result in the ETC so far. He had his debut year last year, did the 14-year-old from Holland. Seventh place in Aragon. So the fact that he's starting from the front row, I'd certainly be hoping to go a lot 
better. Incidentally, both David Alonso and Zonta van den Goldberg, part of the Red Bull Rookies Championship, which starts later on this year. On to the second row then, and another debutant in Alberto Fernandez on the championship winning bike of last year. The Cuna de Campione squad that, of course, was able to guide Ethan Guevara to his 2019 championship and were hoping for similar exploits from the young Spaniard. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's he's another rider who, I mean, he's only 12 years old and he's in such a short career, he's done an awful lot, winning of the Hawkers Cup as well in 2018. Uh, so again, he's another rider who's got a big future ahead of him and it starts here today in the Hawkers European Talent Cup. Ivan Artola starting in fifth position. Um, and he's a rider who, perhaps unlike many on this grid, has a bit of experience to draw on. He's raced in the European Talent Cup before, a very, very strong rider last year. Um, the runner-up indeed last year with three wins. Surely, if it's difficult, I know it's difficult to pick a favourite out of this, but Ortola surely does start as the slight favourite. Yeah, absolutely. He won both races here, as you rightly say, Lewis, last year here in Estoril by a combined margin. Of course, two races as we do have here today. So his combined margin of winning last year was 0.092 across two races, that is. So that's just an indication of what to expect today. Yeah, absolutely. And the finish to uh, the race last year when he was going side by side with Fenton Seabright across the line was as close as as it comes uh, in the very, very difficult conditions that we had. Of course, no repeat of those conditions today. Um, but yeah, he's going to be a rider to very much keep an eye on. Completing the second row, we just caught a glimpse of Marcos Ruda on the number 69. Uh, second year in race two last year, so he's also got some past form at Estoril um, to draw on. It's his second year in the European Talent Cup, and he was a top 10 rider last year, so he's another rider who will have a, a decent shot at making a step up and maybe even challenging the podium today. Yeah, change of team for him this year is with the Cunha de Campione squad. Last year, now a part of the Leglise Academy. On to the third row of the grid, fronted by Marco Tapia, the number 13, again, just 13 years of age. Best finish last year of 12th in the European Talent Cup. It was his debut year last year, so already showing a big improvement and a big jump forward from what we saw from the Spaniard last year. Yeah, he improved a lot as the year went on last year. He definitely found his best form towards the end of the season as he learned the bikes, learned the tracks, and learned the new level of competition. That's something that we can't really understate with these riders. A lot of them have got experience, a lot of them have got success at national level before arriving in the European Talent Cup, but this is a whole new level. This is a real step up uh, for the riders that are taking on the Hawkers European Talent Cup Challenge this year, and that includes uh, Alvaro Carpe, who we're looking at now on the third row of the red starts, eighth today. Um, not a great start to his day, it has to be said. He did have um, a bit of a crash this morning in morning warm-up, but he is another highly rated product of the Cuna de Campiones, the 13-year-old from Murcia. So um, he's another rider that comes with a glowing reputation and we're looking to live up to that today. Yeah, a bit of a surprise package to be perfectly honest. A part of the Spanish Moto4 Championship last year was only able to pick up one podium across 2019 but has made the jump into the European Talent Cup and is already challenging inside the top 10. Start from 8 for this one. The final place on the third row of the grid is the Italian Filippo Farioli, the number 7 from Bergamo. 15 years of age. This is his debut in the European Talent Cup after taking part in the Italian Pre-Moto 3 Championship last year, a championship that he finished third in with victories at Imola and Masano. So a man that is used to taking victory, but as you've just said, Lewis, it's a completely different kettle of fish moving up from a national championship to this European series. It is. They're not easy circuits to win on either, Misano and Imola. So he's, yeah, he's got some good pedigree on Grand Prix level circuits, as Estoril certainly is. We're looking now at Julio Garcia, uh, who completes the top 10, starts at the front of row four. Um, he's a rider that's part of the uh, Jerez Andalusia uh, talent program. It's his second year in the European Talent Cup. Just 13 years old, although he does turn 14 on Saturday. So an early happy birthday to him. We'll be looking to mark that um, with a top 10 finish in what is his second season in the European Talent Cup. So here is the starting grid for our first race of the day, the first Hawkers European Talent Cup race in 2020. And it's David Alonso on pole position, joined by Angel Piqueras and Zonta van den Goorberg. Rofe. Two of the grid, Alberto Fernandez, Ivan Ortola and Marcos Ruda. We've rowed three, Marco Tapia, Alvaro Carpe and Filippo Farioli. Julio Garcia, De Giro Sacco and Colin Vaya make up row four with uh, Juan Rodriguez, Matteo Pedano and Justin Foucault on row six. Uh, we have Charul Ezwan Charil, Jacob Rulstone and Adrian Cruces. 
Row seven at a grid. Plonk, Sandoval and Berta, Philip Ton, the German, Meyer and Scott, the American. And then row nine of the grid. Volpe, Voigt and Morelli. The naughty row of the grid. We'll come to that in a minute. Yeah, all three riders carrying group penalties. Detweiler, Almona, Seal and Bernal on row 10. Trias, Perran and Collins, the Canadian on row 11. And completely out of Misera, Perron and Pavlek, the pole, 36th on the grid. Another row further back, the final one of the grid, making it a 38-strong grid, is Marceau Lapierre and Matthias Passweek. 38 riders all fighting for the opening victory in the Hawkers European Talent Cup in 2020. Oh, and we've got early problems as well for the number 58 there of Matthias Passiuk, the man on the last spot on the grid. It looks like he might have stalled it they're struggling to get it going and as a result of that the fact that the one minute board has gone up if the bike is stalled they have to roll it off the grid that is the protocol so he will start from pit lane will the pole making his european talent cup debut not the way you would like your first ever race to start no and you can see the agitation from him there as his bike was being wheeled off the grid i mean he's starting at the back anyway so in some ways it's not a huge disadvantage from where he was already starting but that's not the way when you're making you know, what is essentially uh, your debut at this level. He's obviously raced at Polish national level, uh, has Pasiuk, but no, this is his first time at this level. And unfortunately, if he does start this first race of the season, he's gonna have to do so from pit lane. Normally in the Hawkers European Talent Cup, we see a whole host of action. The finishes normally are extremely tight if you've never seen a race before. Groups of 10, 12, 15 are not uncommon. However, just as a precursor, as we said at the top of the show, our pole man, David Alonso, did qualify half a second quicker than anybody else. He looks as though he's just got an edge on the rest of his rivals at this opening round of 2020. As you can see, conditions absolutely perfect. Little bit of a wind, but the sun is beaming down on the Portuguese circuit. We've had to wait quite some time, but we're certainly ready to get going. Yeah, we're looking forward to this. The first race of the 2020 season, as we've already discussed, we've had to wait a little bit longer than we expected or hoped for this opening round of the season, but plenty of action to come. This is one of the places on the circuit where we're likely to see action, uh, the uphill climb uh, into turns nine and 10. That's one of the places where you can maybe put a little bit of a block pass on your opponents as you go up the hill. And as we walk in the circuit, it actually, the camera angle doesn't really do justice as to just how steep a climb that is um, as you go up into turn nines and 10. The other corners that you might want to look out for for some overtakes, turn one, obviously, um, on the long run down the main straight. Uh, turn two is another potential option. And turn six, MotoGP fans will know that corner for the famous Nicky Hayden, Danny Pedrosa collision of 2006. Hopefully no repeats of that today. Having ran the circuit yesterday, Lewis, I can confirm that that chicane <laughs> is very, very steep, especially coming at the end of the lap as well. When I was just running out of puff, it was quite a climb to get up that and finish the lap. Hopefully no such issues for this man. The Colombian, David Alonso, starts his first ever Hawkers European Talent Cup race from pole position, joined there by Angel Piqueras, the debutant, already a champion in 2018 and 2019. Can he do it again in 2020? And the Dutchman. Sonte van den Goerberg also starting from a first ever front row. 16 laps ahead of the youngsters as 2020 finally gets underway. The green flag waves at the back. Keep your eye on the lights in the top left-hand corner. Angel Piqueras rolls into position. Nothing wrong with that as long as he doesn't jump the start now. The lights are on. And we are underway in 2020, a dynamite start from David Alonso from pole position. Meanwhile, Piqueras went backwards off the line. Surely it's going to be Alonso that's going to have the long run down to turn one covered. Yeah, the number 80 will lead us into turn one. Meanwhile, that's a move from the second row of the grid coming through from the number 54 of Alberto Fernandez. Great start from the Cuna de Campeones, man. Yeah, Carpe's made a good start as well on the 83. He's made a good jump from the third row of the grid. He's up into third place at the moment. Having a look up the inside uh, of Fernandez. Um, but as you mentioned, Piqueras just went backwards. Just a very, very slow jump off the lines. Nothing wrong with his reaction time. We did see him moving the bike before the lights went out. Nothing wrong with that, as you mentioned. But once the lights did go out, there was very little movement. 
just looked as though he bogged down. He didn't get it right whatsoever. He's managed to recover a little bit now. He's up to fourth place, is the Spaniard, just on the tail of the man in third place, Alvaro Carpe, as you rightly pointed out, Lewis. Made a great start through from the third row of the grid. Meanwhile, already, as there goes, the, the man recovering from that poor start, Angel Piqueras, under the inside of Alvaro Carpe, who looks to have he gone like backwards he wide, there. Yeah. He went a long way wide there and has dropped possibly outside of the top 10 now to the number 83, having a couple of problems on this opening lap. I was going to say, already a couple of issues you would have to think for Alberto Fernandez and Angel Piqueras in second and third place because David Alonso already has three or four bike lengths over the guys trying to chase him down. Yeah, Marcos Ruda is another rider who's made progress. He's up two spots from sixth to fourth in the race at the moment. He's got Ivan Artola right on his tail. Artola starting um, from the second row. He's held station pretty much, but he's one of the riders who'll be wanting to try and keep out uh, David Alonso in sight. He's already making a little bit of a break as he comes out of the last corner to start the uh, second lap. A um, little bit of a gap already, and if they're not very careful, he'll be away and gone. Once you've lost that slipstream on these machines, it's very difficult to get it back. Good news, Lewis. I had to keep my eye on this one after waiting over 200 days. All 38 riders did not jump the start. I thought we were surely, surely we were going to have at least one that was far too eager, far too keen on this first race of 2020. But fair play, all 38, no jump starts. We are underway and we are off. One lap down, 2020 Hawkers European Talent Cup is right underway. Meanwhile, there's a move through to second place for David Alonso's teammate. That looks like our pre-race phase the number 48 of Ivan Ortola, as we mentioned, already has two victories from this time last year around the Portuguese circuit, and he can see problems starting to grow ahead of this battle for second place. He's got to the front of it. I'm sure it won't be long before we see him tap the back of his bike and say, guys, we can't be messing around here. We have to try and close in on David Alonso, because another couple of laps and he will be gone. Yeah, leads already over his second, Jack. 1.2 seconds as we come through the halfway point of this second lap. It was 0.9 over the line uh, for Alonso, so he's already increased that by nearly four tenths uh, on this lap and that's the that's the danger these guys have got they're fighting for second they all want to be the rider to lead this chase group but unless they actually work together and tow each other up to David Alonso essentially it's going to be counterproductive they're just going to slow each other up as they br outbreak each other dive up the inside of each other slipstream past each other Alonso has got no one to worry about he's able to ride his own rhythm out front and that's certainly what he's doing uh, they have Pulled a tenth and a half back in the third sector at the moment with this group now led by Piqueras. Um, but as I say, this gap is over a second and they can't let that get much bigger. Piqueras just 13 years of age, but what a riding style he's got through the final corner here. He is all action, properly throws himself off the bike. You can see why he's already won championships in 2018 and 2019 on a national level here in Spain. What a talent that kid is, just 13. You can see a proper pocket rocket. No surprise that the Australia Galicia concern, who have had a whole host of world champions come through their ranks over the past few years and picked him up and signed him up for this European Talent Cup campaign. Yeah, Raidu right, didn't get away very well at the start. As you can see, him just at the back of this second group is the 84 of Van der Gerberg. Uh, he was pretty quick on that second lap. He was the closest rider in terms of pace um, to the leading two Aspar bikes of Alonso and Ortola. Gone from third to sixth uh, at the start of this race. So keep a high up for him on the 84 in sixth place. He'll be looking to make progress as well. Ortola gets back to the front of this second group of riders, the fight for second place. Incidentally, the gap went up by just a tenth of a second last time around. Now 1.3 is David Alonso's advantage. We were just saying that Ivan Ortola got to the front of that group, but it's all changed once again, because there goes Piqueras back in front of Ivan Ortola. And Ortola will have one issue. As you can see, he's quite a little bit taller than everybody else. It's a little bit more difficult for him to get behind the bubble when we make the the run out of turn five down towards turn six and of course down the start finish straight as well he's been easily drafted past on a number of occasions already so when he's trying to lead this group and try and chase down his teammate ahead he's having a couple of issues there because he's unable to lead the group because Piqueras is just so much quicker when he's tucked in behind him and that makes such a big difference on these bikes as you mentioned that slipstream that 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 drive down the straight and as you say if you're creating a much bigger hole in the air not only are you making yourself slower but you're helping the guys behind you uh, to tow past you so Ortola has that problem um, in this um, European Town Cup race we'll see how he goes now as he pulls out from behind Piqueras whether he can make the, the most of this slipstream uh, to try and take second place Ruda's behind him in fourth Ferrandez is fifth
van der Goberg still in sixth place, although he set the fastest lap of the race last time around, just five thousandths of a second quicker than the leader, Alonso, whose lead now is up to 1.6 over this group. So van der Goberg, second lap in a row, uh, lapping very, very quickly indeed. So he might be the rider. If he can get to the front of this chase group in second, he might be able to close the gap to Alonso. But at the moment, no real progress uh, for van der Goberg as he sees uh, the 74 of Sacco uh, closing up behind him. Well, the running to turn one there for a second, I thought there's absolutely no chance four or five is going to go into one. There were arms, legs, knees absolutely everywhere, but somehow they all managed to make it into turn one and out of turn one as well. As a result, is Marcos Ruda, number 69, that's come out of that gaggle in front. And now we've got a follow. That's the number 27. Sandoval. Romeo Sandoval, the 12-year-old, the first man to go down. He is the teammate, of course to Alberto, no he's not the teammate to Alberto Ferrandez, he's the team two, the man that started from row three, the grid, Alvaro Carpe of course made that mistake on the opening lap and has dropped backwards as a result of that, now down to 14th is Alvaro Carpe, so he was in the running after the first half a lap but that mistake has cost him dearly because he's just hanging on to a point scoring finish at the moment. Yeah, as you mentioned, that battle into turn one that really has slowed this second group up. Alonso's lead now is touching two seconds. Um, so it, it may come a point in this race where these riders just accept that the leader has gone and they then turn their attention to their battle for second place. I'm not sure whether there is much of a code amongst uh, Hawkers European Tank Cup riders to work together to try and pull a leader back. I think it's mainly C rider, overtake rider. Uh, and it looks like Ivan Artola in third place is going to employ that strategy now as he comes down the main straight in the slipstream. Uh, Van der Goberg still back in sixth place. Ferrandez and Keras just ahead of him um, as we go across the line. And it was actually Van der Goberg who had a very slow lap that time around. He was back in the 149s, uh, having lapped in the 47s previously to that. And it was the 13 of Marco Tapia, the Italian in third, uh, the number 13 in ninth, who now sets the fastest lap of the race. He's the only rider that time around in the 147s. I think the big issue for Ivan Ortola here, as probably one of the most experienced riders on the grid at 15 years of age, who was runner-up in this series last year, he would absolutely love for the guys behind just to be a little bit sensible for a few laps and chase them down but unfortunately when you're dealing with 12 year olds and 13 year olds youthful exuberance almost always comes into the case and there's absolutely no chance that they're just going to sit behind the man in front of him for a handful of laps although it probably would be beneficial you say Lewis that those guys in the fight for second place are going to have to at some point just admit the fact that David Alonso is away with it at the front I think we're getting pretty close to that moment it's now nearly two and a half seconds the Colombians advantage you can see on screen there he's away with it at the moment and it doesn't look like these guys behind are going to be able to close them in although Ortola has put in a good lap here himself he's been able to put in a couple of bike lengths over Ruda behind him in third place and this probably will help his course yeah and this is the part of the circuit where that extra size and extra strength perhaps might well suit him through these tight twisty switchbacks at the end of the lap if you can just pull out a few bike lengths before he gets onto the straight so he's clear uh, of Ruder in third place. He's out of range uh, as they get into turn one as uh, Piqueras there runs a little bit wide as they go around at turn 10. Uh, that might leave him exposed as it does leave him exposed to Van der Gerberg who's trying to go around the outside of him and get that slingshot, slingshot onto the main straight. But as, it's, as we stand at the moment, Alonso across the line, that lead as we complete uh, lap five, or we go on to lap five, um, is all the way up to 2.4 seconds. Another follow, that's the number 61 that's gone down of Elan Perron from France, the 16-year-old. The oldest man in the field, and you can see probably the tallest man in the field as well. A shame for the number 61, gone down at turn six, but fortunately up and OK. Meanwhile, in the fight for the lead, still David Alonso that leads here in Estoril with Ivan Ortola, Marcos Ruda and Alberto Fernandez trying their level best to try and close down the Colombian. Up to fifth place now, and just put in the fastest first sector we've seen so far is the Gira Sacco, a man that we've not really mentioned, but we probably should have done because he has form in this championship. A 2019 European Talent Cup, finished seventh in the series with podiums in Catalonia and Jerez, was only outside of the top eight on three occasions last year. So he is a regular front runner, and it's good to see that he's showing it again, the Japanese slash Spaniard in 2020. Yeah, if you've spotted the Grand Prix motorcycle racing connection to his first name, that is no coincidence. He is named after the late MotoGP racer Dejiro Kato. Um, does have a Spanish father, born in Spain, and he's raced his entire career up to now in Spain. His, uh, his grandmother says it's her dream to see him race in Japan, which amazingly he hasn't done yet. But if he continues on this path, he no doubt will in the future. The gap has increased. 
2.7 seconds now. David Alonso leads over Ivan Ortola. So despite Ortola taking control of that battle for second place, he's not particularly helped him. Alonso still able to lap a couple of tens quicker than his teammate. And as a result, that gap is growing quite considerably. It looks as though with 11 laps to go, soon to be 10 laps to go, that this is going to be a fight for second place. But anything can happen in the European Talent Cup. If last year is anything to go by, expect the unexpected. So let's not curse David Alonso just yet. Battle for second place, still Ortola that leads that one. With Ruda tucked in behind in second place, with Santa Gorberg now starting to find his way back through the field after a couple of errors a few laps ago. Another follower that's gone down, that's Colin Weyer, the number 30, the Dutchman riding for the Apex Cardoso concern. The Dutchman making his debut this year, part of the Red Bull rookies as well, but he's certainly one to keep an eye on for the future, is Colin Weyer. I think that's down at turn nine, Jack. We saw yellow flags coming out at turn nine on the previous lap, and uh, I, I wonder whether he's perhaps had a little bit of a high side coming out of those tight switchbacks. Um, as we look at this second group now, Ortola once again finding himself swamped on the run down towards turn six. He loses second place um, to Marcos Ruda. And this second group, by the way, they are slowing themselves up, and it's enabling that second group to increase. And um, we've got the riders back in 10th, 11th, 12th, who are actually lapping quicker than them at the moment. As we take another look at the start, notice Piqueras already uh, with several riders ahead of him after that difficult start to the race as he tries to make up some ground on the brakes into Turn 1. And notice already the advantage that David Alonso had before he'd even got into Turn 1. A super start from pole position and he's not looked back since then as we have a little bit of action down into Turn 1, unsurprisingly. It looks as though that might have been the man that's just crashed out, Colin Weyer, on that green Apex Cardoso European talent cup machine that was squeezing up the inside of someone. Fortunately, he has hobbled away from that incident at turn number nine. Back at the front, nine laps to go, and it's still the Colombian that leads. Now three and a half seconds clear of his teammate. In, if anything, his pace is improving. Yeah, he's got that rhythm that we were talking about. He's just lapping consistently in the mid 148s. He doesn't need to do much more than that with the chase group struggling to get out of the 49s at the moment as they overtake each other at, with, with incredible regularity. Um, as we look at Ortola back at the front of that again. Uh, Ruda continues to be um, he, his nearest challenger. We've got a problem here uh, for Bartolome Peran. That looks like the bike has stopped on him. Um, we'll it'd be interested to see if we get a replay. Otherwise, he's trying to recover from a crash, whether the bike has just stopped. That certainly is a crash. And uh, that's Van de Gerberg that's down. The Dutchman's gone down. He was in the fight for second place and third place as well, eyeing up a debut podium in the European Talent Cup. But the Dutchman has gone down, and he is absolutely crestfallen. Let's see what happened here. Oh, yeah, he gets caught on the outside. There's a bit of a bottleneck there into turn two, and Van der Gerbe just gets caught on the outside of that. Nowhere to go for the, for the young Dutchman. So, uh, yeah, unfortunate ending to his race. That just goes to show in these races, in such tight battles, a bottleneck can form as two or three riders have a go at each other into a corner, and he found himself in the wrong place at the wrong time. He's absolutely right to be fuming with that one, of course. Not the rider's fault. I think it might have been Ferrandez or possible, uh, possibly Dejira Sacco. He's the man that's dropped down to 10th place. So it probably was the Japanese rider that was the unfortunate re recipient of a, an elbow that then forced him into Van den Gorberg. But when you're chasing a debut podium and you're right in the mix as well, You'd be understandably devastated to get taken out like that. Fortunately for him, he will start race two from the front row once again. He'll get another go at it from third on the grid in about three or four hours' time. But that incident, Lewis, has allowed second and third place just to break clear ever so slightly from those guys right there that are currently battling it out for fourth. Yeah, and some very interesting lines going on. Piqueras coming out of turn nine into turn ten was taking a very interesting line as they approach there. Keep an eye out for him on the 18. He is surrounded uh, at the moment as they go into turn one. We've got the Leopard bike. Um, in there of Tapia. We've got Ferrandez and Piquet uh, and Cruces are in there as well. It's such a competitive battle um, for what is now looking like fourth place. As you mentioned, that gap has built between uh, Ortola and Rudo, who are fighting for second, uh, and Ferrandez. It's half a second, which might not sound like a lot, but trust me, on these Moto3 bikes, it's quite a lot. Supermarket route being taken there by Marco. Tapia was in fifth place, but he went wide. I think that was at turn three, and it's allowed him to drop further backwards. Meanwhile, worth 
aforementioned, the number 10 of Adrian Cruz says, a part of the Australia Galicia talent team, started from 18th on the grid after being handed a four-place grid penalty for being underweight. But he's already made his way through to inside the top 10 and he's contesting in this fight for a podium finish. The number 10, 13 years of age, has history in the European Talent Cup. Two podiums last year at Albacete and Valencia. Finished off the year in great style with podiums at the uh, both of our final two rounds of 2019. Yeah, 10 riders in this battle for second place. It starts at Ruda, who's currently holding second place in that battle with Ortola. Uh, Ferrandez looks like he's closed that gap back down again, uh, although Piqueras is now going past him into a fourth place. Uh, but this battle goes all the way down to Marco Morelli uh, on the 95 in 11th place. He's just in touch with this. Uh, he's just two seconds adrift of Ruda in second place. Then a five second gap to Volpi in 12th. Carpe, who, as I mentioned, started very well. He's faded to 13th with Julio Garcia and Jacob Rulstone completing the points at the moment. First slip of 2020 there, Lewis. I said Adrian Cruz as a part of the Australia Galicia talent team. That, of course, was last year. His jump ship is now a part of the Cuna de Campeones squad. So you'll be able to see the number 10 on the bright orange Cuna de Campeones machines rather than a 10. Oh, who's gone down there? It's Talking of, it's Austin. two of the Cuna de Campeones bikes. Well, it looks as though it may well be Dejira Sacco. Yes, it is the number 74. And that means the other one is probably Adrian Cruz says it. No, it's not. It's Juan Rodriguez that's gone down, the number 38. So it looks as though teammate has taken out teammate into turn one. And Sacco and Rodriguez are both down. Yeah, disaster for that team. I mean, they've got so many competitors up the front. Um, but yeah, at the moment, it's it's looking like it's all uh, down to one rider in that battle. Now, we'll get a close look at it again as here as they come down to turn one. Let's see if this is another wrong place, wrong time. It is. One of the riders just tags the other. It's difficult to see who was trailing the two. We think Sacco um, was the second of those. He was a tenth of a second behind Rodriguez as they crossed the line. Although, by no means does that mean that that was the order by the time they arrived in the breaking zone uh, for turn one. So, difficult to really make a judgment on that. But as you say, disaster for the Canadian, the Campeones team, who've lost two of their podium challenges. There's another man that's gone down, the number three of Matteo Pedano, 17 years of age from France, was outside of the points, so unfortunately he will drop further back now and it will be DNF for his first race of 2020. What happened here? Looks as though it's going to be another coming together. Yeah, just ran out of room, unfortunately, and picked it up and ran into another rider. That happening at turn four. Fortunately for the Frenchman, he will get another go at it later on this afternoon. But back at the front, there is David Alonso now just over four seconds clear of his teammate Ivan Ortola, who has taken back second place from Angel Piqueras. In the back of your picture, we're able to see that now. But he's got Marcos Ruda for company to the left of him. He's got Piqueras looking to fight back to the right of him. Who's going to take control into the opening corner with now six laps to go? It is Ortola that holds second place. Piqueras there in second, in third, sorry, and Ruda in fourth. As that battle for the final podium places as a result of that crash just one lap ago at turn number one, goes from 10 riders down to eight. Yeah, great move by Krutz says there up the inside into turn two, taking Ruda. Uh, for fourth place, a nice little dive up the inside. We've also seen some interesting moves from Piqueras. He's so good on the brakes, uh, is the young Spaniard uh, on the number 18, uh, just 13 years of age. And he's looking to mark his debut at this level with a podium, and he's got every chance at the moment. He's on the wrong side at the moment of Ortola, um, but he's so strong in the straights, or more to the point, Ortola is losing so much in the straights that it didn't matter if he was on the outside, he just zooms past him. Well, this is our first look at Angel Piqueras, as well as all of you guys at home. And I don't know about you, Lewis, I am excited extremely impressed with the 13 year old he looks incredible on the bike no fear whatsoever no surprise whatsoever that these guys right here fronted by kev coglin a former world championship moto two rider there's the team manager for the junior world championship and the european talent cup guys have signed him up for the 2020 season yeah, we're coming into the final stages of this race now. When they cross the line, we'll have five laps to go. And it's this point where we'll start to have to keep an eye on who leads over the line in this group. Um, because Ortola will no doubt be very, very nervous of coming out of that last corner in second place and being slipstreamed to the line. He's not in that position at the moment. He sits third behind Piqueras. But it'll be interesting to see now if anyone can actually make a move before we get to the finish line. It's quite a long way down the start finish rate, as you can see, as we go past the car uh, grid hatchings. There we go across the line. And it was Ruda who got Piqueras on the run to the line uh, by just two one hundredths of a second. 
Well, he came out of the final corner in fourth place, this Marcos Ruda. Ortola, meanwhile, went backwards. Oh, we've got a problem. Piqueras has got a problem. The number 18 on debut. We were just singing his praises. His left hand goes up into the air, and he's out of it. What a shame. It was an absolutely sensational debut from the 13-year-old Spaniard, but a technical problem with just five laps to go means he won't be picking up a podium on debut. A disaster for Piqueras through no fault of his own. He's done everything right in this race so far on his debut, but yeah, the bike appears to have uh, given up on him as he approaches turn one. Let's have a look. I don't think there's any contact with the rider in front, which might have uh, dislodged something with his bike. We can already see him shifting down the gearbox to get down to the corner. He's on the outside of the moment. Um, and all of a sudden, the bike just doesn't want to play ball anymore. He, he goes around the outside uh, of the Aspar bike of Altola, hand straight up. And that's uh, unfortunately the end of his opening race of the afternoon. Trying to see what happened there because he, as you say, he was blipping down the gearbox. He's trying to keep a close eye, but suddenly the left hand went in the air. He looked over his left hand shoulder to see what the problem was, but couldn't diagnose that one. But unfortunately, great shame for Angel Piqueras. Yeah, we're coming up to the final corner now with David Alonso. Yellows are out at turn 13, so I don't know whether a rider has gone down there as well. Um, but that's not going to inconvenience Alonso at the moment. He's just keeping up that rhythm, continues to lap in the mid 148s, and that's going to impress not only his own team, but teams up and down the paddock. Not just the fact that he's leading the race so comfortably, but his pace has been so consistent from start to finish. His lap times have very rarely differed by a couple of tenths of a second at a time. And that's how he's been able to just continuously extend this lead. He was half a second quicker uh, than his teammate Ortola on the last lap. Six tenths quicker on this lap. His lead now is over five seconds with Ruda taking the line uh, ahead of Ortola. But look at Ortola on the brakes, just straight back up the inside to regain second. With Adrian Cruces now up into third place as well. Remember, he started from 18th on the grid, did the Spaniard, as a result of that fourth place penalty. But he's battled his way through up into podium contention. He's got his teammate for company, two places behind Alberto Fernandez. At the moment, it's the number 69 of Marcos Ruda, who's in the Cuna de Campione sandwich, although. Ruder has now been joined by his teammate, Filippo Farioli, meaning that we've got an Aspar bike up there, we've got two Leclerc Academy bikes, and we've got two Cuna de Campiones machines. We've now the number 95 of Marco Morelli being the singular Australia Galicia talent team machine in this six rider fight. Could we call it seven? I think the number 13 of Marco Tapia with now four laps to go has just drifted off the back of it. It looks as though it's going to come down to these six riders to fight it out for the final podium places with David Alonso at the moment unflustered. At the front. Yeah, I feared for Farioli there. He made a big dive up the inside into turn two, um, into turn three, should I say. And he had all the hallmarks of the incident that took Pedano out of the race a couple of laps ago, where he just got caught on the inside and tagged the rear of a rider. Fortunately, he didn't. Um, we see a move coming in as well. I think that's Farioli again, uh, having a look on the number seven up the inside into turn nine. He's certainly looking quite aggressive as these laps tick away. We're going to have three to go as they come across the line uh, next time around. Um, and as you say, it does look as if Tapia is just detached from this group. He is sort of chipping away at it on this lap. He has made up four tenths on this lap, so I don't really matter just yet. Um, but he's running out of time to make a late break for the podium. There goes Ruder again. Held such a tight line through that double apex final turn 13, and he's able to get a run. Meanwhile, his teammate with a slipstream of about four riders pulls out to the right hand side. Side, the number seven not even in shot at the moment. There he is, sweeps back in front, and he overtakes about four or five guys there to take control of this battle for second place with the laps ticking away. Just three to go here in Estoril at the season opener for the Hawkers European Talent Cup. Five abreast as they went across the line to start that lap. The five of them, Farioli, who's now holding second, all the way down to Ferrandez, who took the line in sixth, were covered by a tenth of a second. Um, and that's how close it's going to be. So that exit from the final corner is going to be all important uh, as we come into the closing stages of this race. Farioli now does lead this chase group in second place uh, with Alonso way out front. Ortola has spent most of this time, I'd say, in this race doing the pacemaking in this second group, but he constantly finds himself uh, under pressure as he comes down the straights. This time, though, he's on the offensive. He goes up the inside and moves past Farioli, um, who now has his teammate looking to try and take fourth place. And Ortola now outbreaks himself and undoes all of that hard work again. 
Ortola going wide at turn six, that is, as they now flick right into turn number seven, and suddenly the man that's been inside second and third place at the front of this group for pretty much all of the race has got a little bit more work to do with two and a half laps remaining. The number 48 there in the middle of your screen has got three riders ahead of him, three riders behind him. That is not a position you would want to be in a European Talent Cup race with coming up to two laps to go. No, and Tapia has made that progress. He has closed that group uh, gap on the group lock, and as you can see, he's already made progress. He's passed the Estrella Galicia bike um, at the tail of this group of Marco Morelli on the 95 and so he's already picked one off up to seventh place um, so he might be the rider with the late race pace um, at the moment on that last lap he was uh, lapping in at the 148 did a 48.9 on that last lap everyone else was in the 49s with the exception of Volpe uh, who leads that chase group who was down in the 50s um, so this is a rider who might well have the late race pace to end up cruising all the way through this and take that podium spot. He's not got much time left to do it. He's in uh, the second last spot of this chase group. Two laps to go as the Gleas bikes now take control of the front. With Marcos Ruda leading at the moment, that battle for second place teammate Farioli behind in third. Here's the fight for ninth place. These guys a little bit further back. Alvaro Carpe has started to move a little bit further forward after that mistake on the opening lap. And he's joined by Matteo Volpi there, the number 77, a part of the 658 Squadra Corsa Academy team. Further back outside of the top 10 at the moment, the final point scoring finishes going the way of Julio Garcia, Harrison Voigt, Jacob Rulston, Noah Detweiler, and Dean. Berta Vinales, the cousin of MotoGP rider Maverick Vinales. But with one and a half laps remaining, let's see if we can keep our eye on that fight for second and third place. Seven riders going to fight right to the death if the previous laps are anything to go by. Here we are back again, and we're absolutely ruled out the number 13 of Marco Tapia. And I do apologize to the Spaniard because he's managed to regather his thoughts, regather his pace, get back onto the rear of this seven rider gaggle. And now he's starting to make his way through the field with a dive bomb up the inside, and it pays off as well. Into the chicane, uphill, he manages to pick off another place. Yeah, Tapia again, he's making that progress late in the race. A massive dive on the inside, looked like there was almost contact there, and it's cost him. Uh, as they go into the penultimate corner. He did take a huge dive up the inside. He's running out of time now because, again, it splintered this group a bit um, as they all fight for second place. Tapia made that dive up the inside uh, into turn nine. Didn't quite make it stick, um, but Alonso crosses the line with a huge lead of well over six seconds. He continues to lap in the 148s, and he's only probably got another one minute, 48 seconds to go before his first win. 4.2 kilometers remaining for the Colombian before he can pick up a first ever Hawkers European Talent Cup win. Meanwhile, as we go into the opening corner, Two riders down. That looks like it's the number 69 of Marcos Ruda and Adrian Cruces as well. Contact between the pair of them into the breaking zone of turn number one of two of the favourites to pick up a podium finish have both gone down. That leaves Ivan Ortola away with it. Half a second clear in second place. The fight now is going to surely come down for who will take the final place on the podium. Four riders remaining. At the moment, it's the 13 of Marco Tapia that leads. Not for long, though, because there goes Alberto Fernandez through into third place. Yeah, Fariola and Fernandez were trying to overtake each other there into the left-hander and it almost let Tapia through um, in the inside to take the pair of them but as it is he's in fourth at the moment the fight for the final podium position as you say looks like it's a four-way fight now um, with Ortola he was the chief beneficiary of that nasty incident into turn one he was the right side he was just ahead of it and was able to break clear and it looks now as if Aspar are on course for a few months of the season the fight for third place half a lap remaining at the moment Ferrandez leaves it with Tapia there in fourth Fifth place is Marco Morelli, and then Farioli there in up two. Fifth place, now he's ahead of Tapia. We're into the final chicane. There's Ortola, he's got second place in the bag now, surely, as we go into the final sector. At the front, David Alonso is surely going to take victory. Ferrandez has put in a dynamite final lap here. He's pulled two or three bike lengths out over Tapia. Is he going to secure? A debut podium finish in the Hawkers European Talent Cup. Talking of debut finishes, this is going to be a first ever win for David Alonso. What a performance from the Colombian. Started from pole position, never looked back. It's a debut win for him. And it's an Aspar 1-2 with Ivan Ortola taking second place. And Fernandez wins the scrap for the final place on the podium with Morelli 
the unfortunate man to miss out in fourth place. Well, we had to wait a while for it, Lewis, but what a way to kick off the season. Fantastic rest of the season, full of incident. Morelli misses out on the podium, but he did just slipstream past Tapir on the run to the line uh, to move from fifth to fourth. Um, and as you can see now, he did it by just 26 thousandths of a second. Farioli finishes sixth, Volpi seventh, Carpe takes eighth, Garcia ninth, and Harrison Voigt rounds out the top 10. Rulestone, Detweiler, Vinales, um, in to take you down to 13th. And the beneficiaries on that last lap of the, the incident at Turn 1 are Philip Ton and Justin Fockert, who round out the points. Well, it was Aspar's day in 2019 when Ivan Ortola picked up two Hawkers European Talent Cup wins and Barry Baltus was able to pick up a Junior World Champions win. And it looks like it's going to be the Aspar team's day in 2020 as well. Both Ortola and Alonso were on the podium this time last year in wet conditions in first and third place. But now it's one better. It's a 1-2 for the Open Bank Aspar Junior team with David Alonso taking a first ever victory in the class and Ivan Ortola backing him up in second place. Alberto Fran as we said, picking up third place on his debut in the European Talent Cup. A great performance from the Cuna de Campeones. Man won the Cuna de Campeones Moto4 Championship last year and has made the jump into the European Talent Cup in 2020 look pretty easy. Meanwhile, that's a great sight to see. Adrian Cruz says on his feet. Looks as though he's OK as a result of this nasty incident going into turn one on the start of the final lap. Oh, it looks as though Cruz has just got it a little bit wrong and ran into the back of Marcos Ruda. Poor old Marcos Ruda, this will be a better angle. Yeah, it looks as though in the braking zone, it was Cruz has that just got it a little bit wrong, trying to dive up the inside and unfortunately braked a little bit too late and went into the rear wheel of the number 69. And as a result, both of them went down of course, glad to see that both of them have been able to get up. This is the reaction of the Liglis Academy squad. Unsurprisingly. Pretty devastated to see their front runner go down. And then for his teammate Marco Tapia to just miss out on the podium. But fifth place for the Italian is by far and away his best ever finish in the Hawkers Talent Cup. Meanwhile, into Park Ferme for the first time. Comes David Alonso, parks into the P1 spot and he can celebrate at long last. Picked up two third place finishes in 2019 and two second place finishes. He's had to wait for a debut win, but at long last it has come for the Colombian. Gets a big hug off team manager, former 125cc world champion, Nico Terol. And also a big high five from teammate as well, Ivan Ortola. There's going to be some big smiles under those masks in the Aspar camp after picking up a 1-2 in the first race of the year. Great ride from that man, Ivan Ortola. Of course, the runner-up in the 2019 championship. We'll be hoping to go one better in 2020 and no better way to start the season than a second place finish. I'm sure he'll be hoping from the second row of the grid to maybe try and go with his teammate in the second race of the day later on. There's Alberto Fernandez. The 12-year-old on debut jumps onto the podium. He had big boots to fill, jumping onto Ethan Guevara's bike. The man, of course, who dominated last year's championship. But it looks as though he's not going to do a bad job, the 12-year-old. Already on the podium after just one race in the Hawkers European Talent Cup. Incidentally, there's going to be a drop one position for the number 13. We were just talking about the number seven of Filippo Farioli. It still remains a, a good result for him. He will jump up to fifth place. And Marco Tapia, the number 13, of course, who we were just saying has picked up his best ever result. Previous best was 12th. We thought he'd come across the line in fifth, but it looks as though he's going to have to drop one place to sixth place as a result of exceeding track limits on that final lap. So as David Alonso jumps onto the scales in the back of your picture there, just to make sure that everything is all under control. He's over the minimum weight limit that they have in place for the European Talent Cup. Once he's done his weighing, I'm sure he'll then turn around and walk across to Lewis Sudderby, who's made his way down from the commentary box into Park Ferme 
to speak with our eventual race winner. There is Lewis primed and ready. Unfortunately, hasn't got a rider to speak to just yet. David Alonso just finishing off all of the necessary rules and regulations at the completion of a race. Final top 10 finishers, we'll just run through quickly. Of course, we've mentioned Alonso, Ortola and Fernandez, your podium finishers. Morelli, Tapia and Farioli in fourth, fifth and sixth. Then have Volpe, Carpe, Garcia and Voigt in the top 10. But here comes David Alonso. For the first time in his European Talent Cup career, he takes victory. And very shortly, he's going to be speaking to Lewis Sudeby. Right, let's jump down to Park Ferme and hear from your race winner. Here's David Alonso with Lewis. David Alonso, winner of the first race of the Hawkers European Talent Cup for 2020. The perfect start for your season, leading from start to finish. Uh, I am very happy. I do a really good race. Uh, all the time, the first one. I am very happy with the pace that I have in all the race. Uh, thanks uh, to the, all the team because of the work they do here and in the test, and and also to my family that support me. And now, well, we are thinking now in the in the second race, but uh, we are very happy of the result and eh, in the other race more. ¿Y en español? Estoy muy contento. No me esperaba que desde la primera vuelta iba a sacar distancia. Eh, ya luego me he concentrado en mantener un ritmo. Y bueno, muy contento de esta carrera. La primera carrera del año primero. También dar muchas gracias al equipo por todo el trabajo que ha hecho. Y a mi familia que, que me apoya también. Y desde casa. Gracias, well done. Here are the highlights then from the opening Hawkers European Telling Cup race of 2020. And it was the Colombian David Alonso to start from pole position. He's dominated the weekend, fastest in free practice, fastest in qualifying, fastest in warm up, and he got a great start to the race from his debut pole. Meanwhile, behind the battle for second and third place would really light up with Ivan Ortola, his Aspar teammate trying desperately to take control of it and close down the number 80 ahead. But unfortunately, had debutant Angel Piqueras for company, I wasn't particularly pleased or happy in letting the Spaniard escape and trying to close down his teammate. It allowed Alonso to break clear. Meanwhile, Carnage would start to ensue behind with Santa Van den Goldberg, having started from the first ever front row, start the first man to get collected. Later on, we saw two Cuna de Campeones men go down in the form of De Gira Sacco and the number 38 of Juan Rodriguez. Then in the closing stages, that was the Frenchman, the number three of Matteo Pedino go down. But as we got into the final lap with Alonso away with it at the start, it looks like the fight was going to come down with Angel Piqueras right in the mix. We have just three laps remaining. The Spaniard undercame some technical problems, so we were left to just five riders to try and fight it out for the final podium places. The number seven of Filippo Farioli took control with two laps to go before then on the final lap. The number 10 of Adrian Cruces ran into the back of Marcos Ruda. That allowed Ivan Ortola to escape for second place, but it was all about the number 80 of David Alonso, the Colombian taking a first ever Hawkers European Talent Cup win. Here are the results then from our first Hawkers European Talent Cup race in 2020. An 11 race championship starting here in Estoril with David Alonso, a dominant victor. Six seconds clear of teammate Ivan Ortola with a debut podium on his debut European Talent Cup race for Alberto Fernandez. Fourth place going to Marco Morelli ahead of Filippo Farioli, Marcos Tapia and Matteo Volpi. Top 10 finish for Harrison Voigt ahead of his compatriot Jacob Rulston. Noah Detweiler, Dean Berta, Philip Ton and Justin Fockert were your final point scoring finishes with Fockert just getting the better of Oscar Almonathio on the final lap. Further down, Torin Collins, the Canadian in 18th, head of Mario Mayer, Tyler Scott, Bly Tiras, Milan Pavlicek and Mario Mitzeri 
and then we get into the non-finishes of, of course Adrian Cruz has one of them on the final lap but the good news for all of the non-finishes there is that we will go racing in race two of the Hawkers European Talent Cup Championship later on this afternoon with the race kicking off at 1 p.m. local time that's GMT plus one here in Portugal the first podium ceremony of 2020 then with Nico Tirol making his way up onto the podium to collect the team award on behalf of the Aspar squad Alberto Fernandez there in third just 12 years of age, but already onto the podium. Ivan Ortola, the 15-year-old, you can see quite a bit taller than the 12-year-old to his left-hand side. And then your race winner, David Alonso, jumping onto the top step of the podium for the first time in his career. Nico Terrell celebrates for the Aspar team with a 1-2. Had a dominant, dominant day here in Estoril in 2019, and it looks as though they're going to do the same in 2020. Can their Junior World Championship guys pick up where the European Talent Cup guys have started? We'll move our attention to them in a couple of hours' time. We've got Moto2 coming up next. There's Ivan Ortola, another podium finish for him in the European Talent Cup. Three victories last year to help him to run us up. This is the first time he's actually jumped onto the podium and he's not been on the top step. Meanwhile, for the first time in his career, four visits to the podium in 2019, but he never got to stand on the top step. Now he finally can do six seconds clear in the opening race of 2020. Your first victor in the Hawkers European Talent Cup is David Alonso. And as a result as well, he'll pick up 250 euros courtesy of sponsor Repsol. Now the Colombian national anthem rings out here in Portugal. Colombian national anthem rings out here at the Circuito de Estoril. Surely, one of the first times in FIMSEV Repsol history. I'm just trying to rack my brain of a, a previous Colombian rider that has been able to, to win a race. Certainly for the first time in a long time. David Alonso, of course, was born in Spain. His grandparents are from Colombia, which is why he rides under the yellow, blue and red flag. And it sounds like we're going to be hearing that national anthem quite a lot yeah. on the evidence of the race we've just watched. Yeah, that should be a national anthem that we might get a little bit used to over the coming weeks and months in 2020. Of course, he's part of the Red Bull Rookies this year as well, so we may well hear it there as well. What a start that was then to the Hawkers European Talent Cup. Ten races to go, of course, it's a condensed season as it is for all world championships and championships around the world in 2020. Just ten races to go, but it's an early lead for David Alonso. My maths isn't very good, Lewis, so doing the championship points after the first race is always pretty easy. We know exactly who's going to be where. Five points clear at the moment of teammate Ivan Ortola with Alberto Fernandez a further nine points back. Some good point scoring finishes there for the Aussies, Harrison Voigt and Jacob Rulston. Plus Noah Detweiler as well, the Swiss riders. Jumping on to the points. A best finish for him in European Talent Cup history. But today, so far, has been about this man. David Alonso takes the first win of 2020. He's got to do it all over again in a couple of hours' time. But up next, don't go anywhere. European Moto2 guys are about to kick off their season.